The Clintons should know better. They are smart people. They have smart people around them. They've been using this as a cash register. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Gary Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you. We've all heard about the mysterious Clinton Foundation, but nobody could really explain what it is. Not even, it turns out, the IRS. Well, enter Charles Ortel, a Harvard MBA who has done a lot of research and is now going to explain to us what is the Clinton Foundation 101. Charles Ortel, I want to welcome you to Go Harrison. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, you've taken some deep looks into the Clinton Foundation. Give us the synopsis of what you've discovered. In this case, what we have here is a rogue charity network. We have a charity that was set up when Bill Clinton was first president to be actually nothing more than a presidential archive studying the historical period of Bill Clinton's presidency, his two terms, that stretched, I think, from 93 to 2001. This charity began to go rogue days after Bill Clinton left the White House, when it began in his name and in the name of the charity to do all sorts of international things which were never authorized and have never validly been authorized since. So it's been taking money for things that are not authorized tax-exempt purposes. No one really knows how it's been spent because the trustees have never bothered to put together a real financial audit as is strictly required in your state, in my state, and many other states. Um, instead, what they have are what, what are called reviews. So, so that, just, I'm uh, going to cut to the chase because people come and go as they listen and watch. Are we seeing the Clinton Foundation, which has you know official tallies of how much they put in, and through your research, we find out that they've made uh, what they call oops mistakes. We have to refile the amount on our taxes because well, it may be a hundred million dollars off, sort of like a Bernie Madoff. The, the approach that um, is so dangerous here with charity fraud is that, in quotes, a charity can be a perfect vehicle for fraud in that um, if you don't have truly independent trustees, and this is not a group of independent trustees, and the, for most of the early part of the foundation, it was the political operatives, the political wing of the Clinton wing of the Democratic Party. Until two, through 2012, they used a very suspect accounting firm, BKD, Boy King David, which is a medium-sized firm that has had its more than its fair share of problems with fraud, particularly in Arkansas. It looks also in your research like much of this is one gargantuan political action committee or PAC fund for the Hillary Clinton campaign. Likewise, money is being diverted international amounts. Uh, people are donating from Saudi Arabia. Are there favors being given for donors that you've been able to discover? Well, most likely, and of course, that whole area of pay for pay and flavor, uh, favors for money is a tougher thing to uncover for a variety of reasons. First, uh, even you know, uh, sordid crooks don't sit down and write memos of, you know, you give me a million and I'll give you an ambassadorship. That's stuff you're not going to find readily. <laughs> That's why. That's well, why I'm concentrating. Uh, that's why that's I'm what concentrating. you think. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I've been concentrating on charity fraud because under New York law, in charity fraud, you don't have to prove intent. All you have to prove is that the filings are false and materially misleading. And I stake my professional reputation on that. They definitely are false and materially misleading. There are lots of missing documents that I found. Um, and then you have to prove that this uh, operation was soliciting, not receiving money, just soliciting, and that they admit. So it's very easy to prove, I would argue, charity fraud. But to date, the political apparatus in this country, the U.S. Attorneys General, um, certainly the Department of Justice, the IRS, have decided that they just yet cannot take on somebody who has proven in the past, when part of the Clinton team, to be quite vindictive, the people who crossed them. Harrison with you. You're watching and listening to Go Harrison. We are talking to Harvard MBA Charles Ortel who has been researching the Clinton Foundation, has found out a lot of the money seems to be missing. This is not about whom to vote for, A or B. It's more about transparency with any elected government official, simply about information. 
to uh, go around the world saying you're doing, you know, taking on a challenge like fighting HIV AIDS in the rural portions of the poorest places in the world, and then not to check the medicine to make sure that it isn't adulterated. You read that Fortune magazine article, Dirty Medicine, about Ranbaxy, and you will, uh, I mean, there, there needs to be riots in the streets to get into the bottom of this, because the way I read it, uh, donors, government donors, whom the Clinton Foundation refuses to give pr precise details on as required under New York law, government donors gave this entity a lot more money than it apparently spent, and it may have purchased defective HIV medicines that actually kill people. Now, that's not doing more. That's deplorable. You want to talk about deplorable? That's deplorable. It's actually despicable. The principal designation of this nonprofit, when you're a nonprofit in the United States, you say you make shoes. If you make cars instead, you can lose your nonprofit status or your tax free status. In the period 2000 to 2004, when they built the facility, uh, there are no financial statements on the website. Uh, concerning that period. But if you go to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you find those statements. And they state categorically that the accounting principles selected by the trustees are not allowed. They're illegal in the United States of America. You can't do that. And that was the period when this thing was built. So at birth, the foundation went off. And then when Bill took it around the world fighting HIV AIDS and then maybe climate change and a whole bunch of international things, on the original forms, it's crystal clear this thing was not authorized to do anything international at all. And well, then how do you do that? If you create Timmy's nonprofit to uh, recycle beer cans and you're suddenly doing international stuff that has nothing to do with the beer cans, how is it that the state, that the federal government, that even your local city council doesn't come after you and absolutely clobber you for it, including well, the IRS? Well, I'm glad you bring that one up. Your own attorney general, I think, running for Senate, Kamala Harris, put away the t what's called the Texas cancer or the Tennessee cancer charity fraud. That was about a $200 million thing. And to the great credit of Republicans and Democrats, all 50 states attorney general got together and put that thing out of business. It was a much smaller version of the Clinton Foundation. They, they took around $200 million, claimed they were going to spend the money on cancer drugs in Africa, and instead spent it on themselves. Harris with you. You are listening and watching Go Harrison. We are talking to Harvard MBA Charles Ortel, who's exploring the mysterious Clinton Foundation and breaking down what this thing is, something it turns out that the IRS still is somewhat unsure of. We do know that a lot of money is flowing from left to right. What is it for? Who benefits? And is it good for a politician to not disclose that? I'm not a Bernie supporter, but many people in that wing have reached out to me and are quite helpful here. We agree, as conservative economic people and socialists, we agree that charity fraud is despicable and it needs to be exposed fully and punished and the people responsible held accountable. And, you know, I, I just, I'm narrowly focused on that. I'm not particularly interested in partisan politics. I, I can't stand the one, one party sniping at the other party when so many problems exist in this country that could be fixed by people of goodwill if we ignore the distractions created by these parties. So I don't really think m much more than about this foundation. I want to see it fully exposed globally. A lot of people have been harmed around the world. The Clintons should know better. They are smart people. They have smart people around them. They've been using this as a cash register to finance their political ambitions and to make money. And it's just wrong. With this foundation and the amount of cash it's sitting on the interest per day alone is enough to fund many a wild and avaricious appetite. Any fundraising for activities outside the archive need to be immediately suspended. A real accounting firm needs to go in and, and, and forge the accounts going back to October 23, 1997 forward. Then when we, when we uncover how much fraud has occurred here, that's when from the inside we can go after those who are responsible. The chief financial officer is obviously in on this. The chief executive officer is obviously obviously in on this. The accounting firms are in on this. There's some deep pocket trustees in on it. And once we get from the inside the truth, then you can, uh, you know, prosecute and also uh, go ahead with civil lawsuits to make things right and then use this as an example so that people going forward understand you don't practice charity for it, particularly as a former president. So Charles Ortel, how do we follow you? How do we follow your blog? How do we uh, pay attention to this since you 
happen to be doing with the mainstream media, busy with the Kardashians and Donald Trump's hairdo. Uh, how do we follow you, you who are doing the heavy lifting, you whose dendrites and synapses happen to be connected to do the kind of brain work that this requires? Well, thanks so much, uh, Gary. Uh, really two ways. My site is very creatively named charlesortel.com. And, <laughs> and my Twitter address is also very creatively uppercase C, Charles, uppercase O, Ortel. Those are the two best places to reach me. And I try to do a good job of responding to the extent I can to any constructive criticism. Harrison with you, and I want to thank you, Harvard MBA Charles Ortel, for breaking down the 101 of the Clinton Foundation and helping us understand a little bit better how this thing may or may not work. That's kind of the key word. Thank you so much. We'll see you all later.